to my channel. My name is Dr. Luhile Ufefemali, also known as the Tea Fairy. So a couple of weeks ago, I put up a poll on Instagram where you guys could literally ask me anything that pops up in your head. Today, I'm here to answer those questions. Uh, some of the questions are highly, highly related to dentistry and whatnot. And some are a little bit more personal. Question number one is how many APS points do you need to get into dentistry? Well, I must speak about it in terms of UWC. So here at UWC, oh here, we're not at UWC anymore. At UWC, you need a minimum of 40 points and above to get into dentistry. I'm gonna put it up right here for you guys to see the latest updates for oral hygiene and dentistry. So you guys can take a screenshot of that. Question number two, how can one restore or recover their tooth? Now this depends on what is going on inside your mouth. Now a bunch of you always send me pictures on Instagram or TikTok. That only gives me the clinical view of what's going on. Well, basically a photographic view if we're being honest. So for instance, let's say you're just suffering from bleeding gums, gum recession, build up calculus, all that funky stuff. You are probably just gonna get some oral hygiene tips like brush your teeth, floss regularly, and also you might get a professional cleaning done, whether that's just gonna be with a piezo, super gingerly, or you might get a deep cleaning done where we literally go in, give you some anesthesia, and clean within your roots to get rid of all that buildup. If you're suffering from tooth sensitivity, we could give you pretty much the same advice where we tell you to brush your teeth and floss, we might even tell you to switch up the toothpaste that you're using. Maybe you opt for a softer toothbrush. You know, all those things that you didn't really take note of, but could really help you. Also, maybe avoid drinking super, super cold stuff or super, super hot stuff. If you're suffering from tooth decay or also known as dental caries, it depends on how deep the decay is. So if the decay is just on the enamel, which is the first layer of the tooth, it's pretty, it's pretty shallow. You'll walk into the clinic and you'll get a quick feeling and you'll be set off pretty quickly. If it's in the dentine, you can also get away with a really quick restore on the tooth. If it's towards the pulp or in the pulp, that's when we have a major problem. You'll probably need a root canal treatment, get that nerve out, clean out that tooth and then we irrigate it nicely for you to get rid of all those germs and then we fill it up with something called GP points to prevent any future infections from occurring on that tooth and then we put a nice filling for you on top. Now if your tooth is completely unrestorable, it's super curious, there's nothing we can do to restore it to make it look really good for you again. We will probably opt for something like extract the tooth completely and replace it with either a prosthetic appliance such as dentures or we can replace it with a bridge. Is dentistry difficult to do? Well... Excuse me, I'm fucking out of here right now. Dentistry is not easy, you guys. I don't know why people always think that dentistry is so easy. Dentistry is not easy. But I think with school, you are still learning the clinical skills you are still learning the theoretical part of being a dentist and patient management and all these different diseases. It's a lot of information to pump into the brain because dentistry is medicine, pharmacology. It's no good knowing all these clinical skills if you can't explain to the patient why you're doing a root canal, why you opt for a bridge rather than a denture. So you need to make people comfortable with the knowledge that you have so the patient can understand and be like, hmm, my dentist actually knows a lot. I trust her. I trust him. Have my money. Take it all. Take all my coin. In fact, take my salary. And it's also difficult once you're outside of school because you are dealt with all these things that you've been learning for the past five years. I've dealt with how many medical emergencies this year? Two. I just had one today, actually. She was extracting her premolars. She said that she was hungry. Patient did eat, she is diabetic. We did check her blood sugar levels. Her blood sugar levels were high. I think they were about 12 or 14. And then we gave her some medication and then it went down to 10. She wanted to go buy something from the tech shop. 
right outside our hospital and she'll come back. So I said, no problem, ma'am. You can go do your thing, Miss Girl. And then I saw other patients. So I was waiting for it and I realized, oh, it's been an hour. Where is this patient? Jiggy jiggy, five minutes later, someone comes in and says your patient fainted on her way back from the tech shop. This happened on the hospital premises, so she was okay. She, she was put on a wheelchair and she was sent back into the clinic. And we asked the girl what happened and she explained what happened. And you don't always know what to do. Luckily, there's always trained professionals around me. There are trained nurses, trained dentists, trained medical officers, pharmacists. So we have a whole staff yeah ready if anything goes wrong with any patient that we see you're continuously learning you're continuously putting yourself in the academic environments and you're also learning new things in the clinic as well when you're faced with different challenges right now i'm dealing with a pros patient this patient it's a case that i would have seen in school but that was like how many months ago almost a year that i've dealt with a patient with a similar case so now i'm kind of refreshing you so you see I'm relearning how to deal with patients of this case. This patient has a class three, which means their teeth are not in the normal bite. The lower jaw is more forward than the upper jaw. So it's making it difficult to record the bite and all of these things, but I need to get it done because the patient needs to smile at the end of the day. He's a young man and he barely has any top teeth. I think he has two top teeth left. Those teeth are at the back. Since you completed uni, can you please tell us what first year, second year and third year was like? The first year I felt like high school over again because we were doing physics, we were doing chemistry, we were doing life science but more in an advanced level as modules and we were doing other modules of course. I was struggling the first six months of first year physics and chemistry, especially physics. We were doing talk, we were doing things that were more advanced and I was like oh my gosh why are we doing this, can we just get to the teeth already? So I was like not in it. I was I didn't have the best attitude. And then the second half of first year, it was good. I enjoyed the half. I enjoyed, you know, you know, doing clinical dent, even though it was very difficult to get an A in clinical dentistry. It didn't matter how hard I worked. But yeah, I was enjoying it because now I'm finally learning about the teeth. I'm learning, you know, it was very interesting learning about tooth anatomy. Second year until March was great because COVID happened. It was 2020. We went online for the whole year. So the whole year I was online with my friends. We were doing online tasks, quizzes, tests, everything. It was good because I had a good support system with my friends. I'm still in contact with them right now. And we carried on that support system until we finished actually. So in COVID, we got really close and we worked as a team to make things happen. I went back to school on campus later on in the year, I would say around September. I was tired of being at home, guys, to be honest. We were still online, but yeah, a few of my friends came back on campus, my roommate and her friend. So we were just having a time. Things were very limited because it was COVID, but I, I just loved being around my age group again. And I just, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was, it was great. The third year, we were still online again around end of first term. That's when they decided that we're going to go back to contact learning and test. At the beginning of third year, we had so many preclinicals, you guys, because we missed out on so many preclinicals, so much time in second year. Things that we should have completed in second year were carried on to third year and we also had third year work. So I always say third year was a mind shift because when I was in third year, everything was different. I had to juggle theory. I had to juggle clinics for the very first time. I did my first Kant clinic in third year and I'll never forget. We didn't have enough space. So I had to see my patient in the Pete's department. That was my first time actually noticing the Pete's department with all the paintings on the wall. It was super cute, man. So I had my patient and she was a cuddly lady. She was a teenager and I had the smallest filling. It was a class five. Yeah, it was pretty easy. I knew my work. I studied in advance. So when the supervisor came to ask me questions, I aced that, you know, and it was a lot of pressure because my supervisor was actually the person who wrote our Khan's clinical book. 
so he made sure that he asked like those those hard questions so question number five were you self-funded in university no i was not self-funded in university i was fortunate to get a bursary if you guys don't know dentistry is not cheap dental school is very expensive and honestly i do not know how the people who were self-funded got through it because it's really expensive a lot of people did drop out of dentistry because of the financial cost because it's not just the cost of the model modules it's also the cost of food at risk it's also the cost of food on campus because you get hungry it's also the cost of the tools that we use it's the cost of the scrubs that we wear it's the cost of the lab coats that we wear so all these things accumulate and it's a whole lot of money my parents are very loving and supportive so they also supported me emotionally and financially question number six who are you crushing on in university child there were so many cute boys in university i'm not even gonna cap like when i got there in first year there were so many cute boys at my res on campus they were just so cute and then but i think the cutest cutest boys were probably the guys that ugh, i don't want to sound like i bag all my crushes but i had crushes on two guys i i kind of want to say i pursued oh, the 2020s we take charge ladies but i i think yeah the first guy i shot my shots at this other school event after getting much encouragement from my friends encouragement the second guy it was very mutual like it was a very ooh, i don't know it was very nice it was a it was a meet cute with the second guy and we ended up dating for like quite a long time but the first guy we uh, we uh, i'll say we dated yeah it he didn't want he wasn't ready for oh now we put him on business on the internet he wasn't ready for a relationship, so I was like, okay. And then the second guy, ooh, we just vibed. We clicked in so many different levels. And yeah, that's why we dated. We both wanted to to date each other, like, eventually. And we saw, so, right, let's just do it. Because, like, we clearly, there's something special between us. So, yeah, those are my crushes. The other guys were cute. I don't really, I don't want to say I had a crush on them. Like, the others were like, okay, there goes a cute guy. But... Anyways, moving on to the next question. Question number seven. What clinic do you like the most? Oh, guys, isn't it obvious? If you guys watch my vlogs, whether it's the long-form vlogs on YouTube or it's the short-term vlogs on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube shorts, you'll kind of get an idea of what I like. Dang, I really post everything. I love pros. I love cons. Oh, I really love cons. When I'm doing a feeling, you guys, I can't explain it. There's a sense of peace. When I'm working with composite, I love endo, but unfortunately, I haven't done any endo this entire year. Pits is okay. I kind of like pits, but unfortunately, again, all I do here with the pits patients is extract. We do have some fissure sealants here and there, you know, Clean Pro, but it's it's not what I it's not anything compared to what I used to do in varsity. Yeah, pits in varsity was great, minus the the grading at the end of the session. I love conservative dentistry. I love prosthodontics. So yeah, that's where that's where I am at. Oh, that's good. Which modules did you do in first and second year, and which ones were the most difficult? So I'm gonna list all these modules that I did for you guys, and you guys are more than welcome to screenshot them. Let's get into it so in first year i did academic literacy for dentistry chemistry for dentistry clinical dentistry one primary health care human biology 105 life science 141 physics for dentistry 113 and introduction to is it cause dent in second year i did basic dental materials 200 basis of disease process clinical dentistry interdisciplinary health promotion human biology 205 non-invasive restorative techniques oral biology prosthetic techniques radiation physics radiographic techniques 
like i said earlier in the video i struggled a lot with the physics yeah it was just so difficult but what i liked is that i was not the only one so i was not struggling alone i was struggling with my friends so we were tutoring each other basically the blind leading the blind but it was nice man the struggle was funny the struggle was funny but the marks weren't but the struggle was in second year i would say oral biology because it had a lot of information but yeah got through it passed really well so did i though i think so yeah the very last question what is your favorite thing to do before you head into the clinics listening to the gospel so sometimes I would play a sermon in the morning and just listen to it. Or sometimes I would listen to gospel music in the morning. It's kind of my way of bargaining with God in a way, because I know that every day I face a different challenge. I face new cases, whether it be trauma or pros or whatnot, I face different things. I always make it a point to listen to the gospel. And I always feel like every time I listen to the gospel or I pray, that day goes well or god gives me the strength to use my knowledge and my clinical skills to treat the patient to the best of my ability so those days are the days that you know i really flourish in especially when i pray and i'm not just talking about like a light-hearted pray like i pray to god in health you never know i feel like with medical offices it's probably worse and the nurses because there's these terrific cases that they face whereas for me um they are horrible we see broken jaws and all this stuff but it's not as extreme to the level so i think it's really difficult not to have a sense of belief if you're in health guys like i can't imagine going through school or even going through work and not having a connection with god because i don't know i would have made major mistakes in my health profession career i wouldn't have had a clearer mind to deal with certain things had i not prayed that morning so god just gives me clarity and i'm able to kind of like almost erase my mind of my current problems and i'm able to focus on the day and focus on the patients that i see so that is my number one thing to do before i step foot into the clinics and take out a random strangers to Anyways, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this little Q&A and you got to know me a little bit more or you got to know more about dentistry. But if there's anything else you guys want to know, you're more than welcome to DM me or you're more than welcome to comment down below. Whichever one floats your boat. I'm going to reply either way with either a comment or a video. But anyways, guys, and you guys really love the vlogs. You guys always request the vlogs. And one person actually wanted them to be longer. But what's funny is the vlogs don't do, they don't do really well in terms of views. But like, I like the little community that we have with the vlogs because cert there's only a certain number of people who actually watch the vlogs, which is super cool because I feel like those are the real, real subscribers, if you get what I mean. And other people are just here to say hi and say bye, which I'm pretty cool with. But I feel like the people who actually stick around for the vlogs are the real diehards. So I appreciate that. And no matter how many views those get, I'm just gonna I'm still gonna pump up those vlogs for you guys so that you guys can actually see what it's like being a dentist, what it's like working in ComServe, all these things. And I hope that. All my video diaries, my vlogs have helped some people get through dental school. Anyways, I will see you guys next time and bye.